Okay, good, very good afternoon, my dear students. In the last class, we have started the module six of chapter four, uh, where we have started the discussion of the properties of uh, channel capacity, and we discussed it for various discrete channels. Now let us. Uh, I think we have discussed uh, almost all five properties. And initially we have started with the definition of channel capacity, which is a maximum of I of XY. So it is a maximum of mutual information. OK, so based on this definition we have started. And <coughs> next we discussed five properties in the last class. So first property is we discussed the channel capacity calculation for noise free channel. And we obtained it as uh, maximum value of H of X or H of Y. Because H of X by Y or H of Y by X is zero. So that's why maximum of H of X or maximum of H of Y will be either log M base 2 or log N base 2. OK, so next we have gone through the mutual information for an independent channel, which is zero because H of X is H of X by Y and H of Y is H of Y by X. So because the values are equal, the difference between H of X and H of X by Y or the difference between H of Y and H of Y by X is zero. OK, so that's why channel capacity is obtained as maximum of I of X Y, but I of X Y is zero for the independent channel because of this uh, equal relationship. So therefore maximum of zero will be zero only. OK, so that's why for an independent channel we discussed that the mutual the channel capacity is the maximum of mutual information where I of XY is zero. So maximum of zero will be zero. So uh, that's the conclusion is that channel capacity for the independent channel is zero. OK, and also we discussed uh, the channel capacity calculation for symmetric channel. And, and I said you that uh, the it, uh, like uh, matrix is said to be symmetric or the channel is said to be symmetric when the elements of each row or the column, if you observe the column elements or the row elements, these elements, all the, all the elements, the row elements or column elements are independently identical. So if you observe first row consists of two one by fours and one one by two. Similarly, the same elements will be uh, present in each and every row as well as the column. OK, so either row elements or column elements. OK are independently identical. So irrespective of their location, they are identical. So on that day I calculated a C as maximum of H of X minus H of X by Y. And initially I represented H of X by Y as how we represented this. We represented this as average conditional entropy expression H of X by Y K knowing Y K. So and we replaced the summation K is equal to 1 to N P of Y K as some 1. And we finally obtained it as log M base 2 minus H of X by Y K because the maximum of H of X is once again log M base 2. OK, and now therefore for a symmetric channel, we obtained the channel capacity of the transmitter as C is equal to log M base 2 minus H of X by Y K. So similarly for a symmetric channel uh, at the receiver, we can say that channel capacity C is equal to log n base 2 minus h of y by xj. OK, so you can uh, see the symmetric channel uh, symmetric channel uh, channel capacity expression. At the transmitter as well as the receiver expressions, OK, which I have shown it in the rectangular boxes. And uh, even the same we continued for the binary symmetric channel in the last class. We completed the derivation and here you can observe the binary symmetric channel. So binary represents the two events are on the transmitter side and two events on the receiver side. So using the channel, you should be able to construct the conditional probability matrix. So this is the conditional probability matrix. So we took the same symmetric channel expression uh, that is log M base 2 minus H of X by Y K and uh, we replaced uh, M as 2. Then log 2 base 2 will be 1 minus H of X by Y K. OK. So uh, here we once again replaced H of X by Y K with its uh, general expression. This is the average conditional entropy. And uh, now we are familiar with P of X by Y matrix. And you hear uh, these are the elements of P of X by Y matrix. 
uh, based on the corresponding probabilities. And it, here if you observe denominator is YK. So here denominator YK represents that YK is known to you and you are fixing the any column. So that can be first column or the second column. So you are uh, like uh, what you are doing here, you are considering only one column that is either the first column or the second column. Then the channel capacity is obtained as 1 plus P log P base 2 plus 1 minus P log 1 minus P base 2. Similarly, if you observe the, uh, like consider the second uh, column, then also you will get the same channel capacity expression. Now, if you observe, uh, if you, for example, if you assume H of P as some minus of P log P base 2 plus 1 minus P log 1 minus P base 2, then uh, what you can do actually, if you replace like this, then the channel capacity is obtained as 1 minus H of P. Okay. And uh, because Q is equal to 1 minus P and because it is a binary symmetric channel, you can also get it as 1 minus H of Q. I said you to calculate the channel capacity for P is equal to 0 0.8, then 1 minus P that is Q will be 0 0.2. So you can use this expression and calculate the channel capacity. So and uh, even this, this slide also we completed in the last class. So and we, we have started the binary non-symmetric channel. Here non-symmetric represents that the elements are not at all identical, okay, all are different. And binary represents that there are two rows and two columns. So for a binary non-symmetric channel, the elements of two rows or the two columns are not identical. So there exists the two elements on the transmitter and the two elements on the receiver. Therefore, M is equal to 2 and N is equal to 2. The matrix size is 2 by 2. Okay, so if you, uh, so here this is a channel given to you. So based on this channel, you can uh, write the conditional probability matrix. Okay, so P of Y by X or P of X by Y is how much? First row, first element. So first row, first column element is P11 because the amount of probability reaching x1 to y1 is p11. So I represented p11. Next x1 y2 that is p12. x2 y1 p21. And x2 y2 is p22. So with a matrix size of 2 by 2. Now to find the capacity of binary non-symmetric channel, two auxiliary variables q1 and q2 are introduced such that pq is equal to minus h where p is the conditional probability matrix consisting of the same four elements which are shown in the channel P11, P12, P21 and P22. Okay, so multiplied by Q1, Q2 matrix. This is the auxiliary matrix and this is equal to minus H and Chepper, where H is the entropy of the first row and second row. So P11 log P11 base 2 plus P12 log P12 base 2. This is for the first row and for the second row you will get P21 log p21 base 2 so minus of p21 log p21 base 2 plus p22 log p22 base 2 okay so finally uh, by using this uh, relation you can get two uh, equations okay so these two equations if you see uh, you can calculate the two unknowns q1 and q2 so once you calculate the two unknowns you can easily calculate the channel capacity of binary non-symmetric channel which is obtained as c is equal to log 2 power q1 plus 2 power q2 okay so using this relation you can calculate the channel capacity of binary non-symmetric channel okay so up to this we discussed in the last class now let us move to the next property sixth uh, one where uh, here you can see a binary cascaded channel a binary cascaded channel. This binary cascaded channel is a combination of two binary symmetric channels. Okay, already you studied that binary symmetric channels. Here if you see there are two binary symmetric channels. For the first binary symmetric channel, the inputs are x1, x2 and outputs are y1, y2. And for the second binary symmetric channel, please observe carefully. For the second channel the inputs are y1 y2 
and the outputs are Z1, Z2. Now here, if you observe this, uh, the two channel cascade, so what actually uh, the term cascade refers? The output of the first channel is fed as input to the second channel. Then you can say that the connection is in cascade form. The output of first channel is fed as input to the second channel. Here two binary symmetric channels are cascaded. For the first channel inputs are X1, X2 and the outputs are Y1, Y2. And the outputs of first channel that is Y1, Y2 are fed as inputs to the second channel Z1 and Z2. Okay. Now the, com the cascade of two channels Okay, this is a cascade of two channels. Now we are going to represent its equivalent form. Its equivalent form using a single binary symmetric channel. Now they are cascade of two binary symmetric channels. We are constructing a single binary symmetric channel, which is generally called as a binary cascaded channel. Here the inputs are X1, X2. So if you observe the binary cascaded channel, the overall input is X1, X2 and the overall output is Z1, Z2. Okay, so overall input is X1, X2 and the overall output is Z1, Z2. Now, uh, in order to calculate the probability of X1 reaching Z1, so actually in order to construct the conditional probability matrix, here you should know the probability of uh, the source reaching the destination. So in order to calculate the probability of X1 reaching Z1 and similarly the probability of X1 reaching Z2 and also the probability of X2 reaching Z1 and the probability of X2 reaching Z2. So here we need to calculate all the probabilities of source elements reaching the corresponding destinations. So in order to calculate all these uh, probabilities, why you need all these probabilities? because you need to represent it in the conditional probability matrix of binary cascaded channel. So that's why what you are going to do, you are going to calculate the probability of X1 reaching Z1. So corresponding source element to the destination points. Here there are two source elements and two destination elements. That's why it is called as binary channel. But why it is called as cascaded channel? The output of first channel is fed as input to the second channel. Okay. Now let us see the probability of signal moving X1 to Z1. Please observe this figure, first figure, not the equivalent form. So right figure represents the equivalent form of the two cascaded channels. Okay. First figure is the general cascade of two binary symmetric channels. Second figure shows the equivalent form. So probability of signal moving from X1 to Z1. Now please observe the figure. X1 to Z1, how many possible paths are there? So in order to move from X1 to Z1, we have to we have two paths. One is X1, Y1, Z1 and X1, Y2, Z1. Okay, two paths are available here. Now for the first path, First path, if you observe, P into P. So probability of X1 to Y1 is P. Y1 to Z1 is P. So overall probability will be P square for the path X1, Y1, Z1. And in order to reach Z1 from X1, you can also follow another path. That is X1, Y2, Z1. And the corresponding uh, probability will be Q into Q because X1 to Y2 probability is Q and y2 to z1 probability is also q so total probability will be q square so x1 to z1 x1 y1 z1 path and second path is x1 y2 z1 so overall probability will be the sum of the two probabilities of x1 moving z1 and a p square plus q square the same i mentioned here in the first point so if you read the first point that is the probability of signal moving from X1 to Z1. So here there are two paths. One is X1, Y1, Z1 and second one is X1, Y2, Z1. Okay. So X1 to Z1 the probability is P square 
and the x1 to z1 the probability is q square so p square plus q square is the overall probability of x1 reaching z1 okay now you obtain some p square plus q square okay anyhow i will tell you why i have represented 1 minus 2 pq instead of p square plus q square we can discuss that in the next slide but you remember that the probability of x1 reaching z1 is p square plus q square okay next the probability of x1 reaching z2 so now we have to calculate the probability of x1 reaching z2 now observe how many paths are there to move from x1 to z2 we can follow x1 y1 z2 z2 path or x1 y2 z2 path so x1 y1 z2 the probability is p into q plus another path x1 y2 z2 the probability is q into p okay so overall probability will be pq plus pq that will be 2 pq that will be 2 pq <coughs> next to the probability of x2 reaching z1 x2 reaching z1 is x2 reaching z1 is x2 y1 z1 probability plus x2 y2 z1 probability so x2 y1 z1 probability is pq and x2 y2 z1 probability is pq so overall probability will be 2 pq because the overall probability is the sum of the two probability okay sum of the two paths uh, two paths probabilities okay so similarly the probability of x2 reaching z2 okay what is the probability of x2 reaching z2 here we have two paths one is x2 y1 z2 or x2 y2 z2 okay x2 y1 z2 another path is x2 y2 z2 okay so if you observe the first path that is x2 y1 z2 if you observe the first path the probability is q into q that is q square plus another path is x2 y2 z2 that is p into p p square so q square plus p square is the overall probability of the two paths from x2 to z2 okay so finally you obtain the forward uh, uh, probability as p square plus q square and alternate probability that is x2 reaching z x2 reaching z1 or x1 reaching z2 probability is 2 pq okay ma now let us see why i have represented p square plus q square as 1 minus 2 pq actually the probability of x1 reaching z1 or x2 reaching z2 is p square plus q square and finally we obtained the probability of x1 reaching z2 or x2 reaching z1 is 2 pq okay so let us uh, once again uh, simplify the probability probabilities shown in the equivalent channel okay so this is the equivalent channel let us see why i have mentioned p square plus q square probability as 1 minus 2 pq now i said you that p of probability of x1 reaching z1 is p square plus q square so how can i write p square plus q square this is in the form of a square plus b square i can write this as a plus b whole square minus 2ab because a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab i took that plus 2ab towards right side so then i can replace p square plus q square as p plus q whole square minus 2pq but you know that p plus q what is the value of p plus q it is the sum of probabilities of a particular event so that should be equal to 1 so p plus q yeah. is 1 so because it is 1 1 minus 2 pq so that's why i have replaced p square plus q square as 1 minus 2 pq because it is a binary symmetric channel and the probabilities of uh, probabilities of a particular element okay it should be equal to 1 that's why 1 minus 2 pq 
let us rewrite this as p dash where p dash is the 1 minus 2 pq which is the probability of x1 reaching z1 please uh, like remember this value as some p dash now the probability of similarly the probability of x2 reaching z2 is p square plus q square now please write this p square plus q square as some p plus q whole square minus 2 pq similar to p uh, p of x1 to z1 okay so it is also 1 minus 2 pq so the probability of x1 reaching z1 or x2 reach to reaching z2 is same which is equal to p square plus q square and you have you can also write it as 1 minus 2 pq take that as p dash now let us take p probability of x1 reaching z2 and x2 reaching z1 both are same actually that is 2 pq let us assume 2 pq as some q dash because if you add p dash and q dash once again it should be 1 if you add p dash and q dash where p dash and q dash are the probabilities of cascaded channel okay p dash and q dash are the probabilities of cascaded channel p dash and q dash are the probabilities of a particular event x1 or x2 so if if you observe x1 probability uh, to reach z1 the probability is 1 minus 2 pq to reach z2 the probability is 2 pq actually in the binary symmetric channel we have considered this as some p and uh, that is x1 to y1 and x1 to y2 Q and Chepi Chepam. Here we obtained 1 minus 2 PQ for X1 to Z1 and for X1 to Z2 we obtained as 2 PQ. That's why we replaced it as some P dash and Q dash. What is P dash? 1 minus 2 PQ. And what is Q dash? 2 PQ. Okay. Now what is the channel? What can be the channel capacity of binary cascaded channel? It is similar to the binary symmetric channel. So uh, I will uh, move back. You can see. This is a binary symmetric channel having P and 1 minus P where 1 minus P is Q. So for this we obtain the channel capacity as 1 minus H of P where H of P is minus of P log P base 2 plus 1 minus P log 1 minus P base 2. Now instead of P, P we have P dash that is 1 minus 2 pq and instead of q we have 2 pq okay so that's why uh, i can write the same expression as for the cascaded channel as 1 minus h of p dash or 1 minus h of q dash where p dash is 1 minus 2 pq and q dash is 2 pq okay so finally we we replaced the cascade of two binary symmetric channels as an equivalent uh, binary symmetric channel having the forward probability as some p dash which is equal to 1 minus 2 pq and uh, uh, like opposite uh, probability as 2 pq that is q dash so finally we obtained so similar to the binary symmetric channel we can write as 1 minus h of p dash or 1 minus h of q dash where h of p dash is minus of p dash log p dash base 2 plus 1 minus p dash log 1 minus p dash base 2. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So you can also write this as. <coughs> I'm sorry. So finally C is equal to 1 minus H of 1 minus 2 PQ or 1 minus H of 2 PQ. Okay. Because p dash is 1 minus 2 pq and q dash is 2 pq okay now so this is all about the <coughs> calculation of channel capacity for binary symmetric channel okay channel capacity calculation for binary cascaded channel is similar to channel capacity for binary symmetric channel so that's why we can write it as c is equal to 1 minus h of p dash or 1 minus h of q dash okay now uh, so finally please remember this expression 1 minus h of p dash or 1 minus h of q dash where h of p dash is 1 minus 2 pq 
and q dash is 2 pq okay let us move to the next slide where you can uh, discuss the last property of channel capacity and here simultaneously i will discuss the problem related to binary erasure channel related to binary erasure channel okay please wait now so for the binary erasure channel please remember carefully this is the last property and here uh, uh, even like while solving the problems you will uh, be given with this kind of channel okay so here you can see the binary erasure channel it has two inputs those are x1 is 0 and x2 is 1 okay so how many inputs are there two inputs are there one is x1 0 and x2 1 and the outputs are 0 the output should be 0 and 1 but actually some uh, like uh, auxiliary output will also be available so for example if you are transmitting zero the output should should be zero and if you are transmitting one the output should be one but instead of transmitting instead of getting zero sometimes you may get some other data similarly if you transmit one you you, you did not receive the data one sometimes you will get some different output the different output is called as the auxiliary output y so how many inputs are there two inputs so out, two outputs you should get but instead of getting the two outputs uh, you are considering an auxiliary output y where the output y has no deterministic decision whether the received data is either 0 or 1 okay so based on the channel now we are going to construct the conditional probability matrix based on this channel we are going to construct the conditional probability matrix here the conditional probability matrix is p of y by x okay this p of y by x why the matrix size is 2 by 3 because there are two elements on the transmitter and three elements on the receiver i can set that the matrix size is 2 by 3 i can set that the matrix size is 2 by 3 okay now let us observe what is the uh, let us calculate the first row elements first row elements are related to x1 and the second row elements are related to x2 if you observe the first row elements x1 y1 is the first row first column element that is p and x1 y2 and x1 y2 is the element q is the element q because here you can see the probability x1 y2 probability is q and x1 y1 probability is p and what is the probability of x1 reaching y3 so x1 doesn't reach y3 so the probability is zero similarly the probability of x2 reaching y1 so x2 do not reach y1 so output is zero so the probability is zero similarly x2 reaching y2 that is q so that's why i have mentioned it as q and x2 is the second column y3 sorry x2 is the second row y3 is the third column 
So X2 reaching Y3 is P. So that's why I have mentioned here as P. So P, Q, 0 and next to 0, Q, P. So based on this channel, you have to construct the probability matrix. Okay. Now in your examinations, you will be given with this kind of problems. Okay. Please listen carefully. So here you are given with a binary erasure channel. Now you, you should be able to calculate the mutual information I of X, Y and the channel capacity C. And the channel capacity C when P of X is alpha and 1 minus alpha. So whenever the P of X, so you are given with P of X. So P of X1 is alpha and P of X2 is 1 minus alpha. Okay. So for the binary erasure channel shown, please observe the channel and already I told you how to write the conditional probability matrix. How to write the conditional probability matrix. From Bayes theorem, we know that P of XY is P of Y by X into P of X. Okay. P of XY is P of Y by X multiplied by P of X. Because you obtained the conditional probability matrix P of Y by X. What is P of Y by X? Probability of Y knowing the X. Because inputs are known to you 0 and 1. Okay. And P of X1 is alpha and P of X2 is 1 minus alpha. Okay, so and because you are calculating the outputs based on the input, the matrix is P of Y by X and it is of size 2 by 3. It is of size 2 by 3. So from Bayes theorem, we know that P of XY is equal to P of Y by X into P of X. Okay, so now P of Y by X, please take P of Y by X and into P of X. Okay, please remember carefully. So whenever a P of X. So in your exams, P of X can be given as 0 0.8 and 0 0.2. Where alpha is 0 0.8 and 1 minus alpha is 0 0.2. Okay. What is this alpha? This alpha can be given as some 0 0.8. So 1 minus alpha will be 0 0.2. Similarly, alpha can be 0 0.7 and 1 minus alpha can be 0 0.3. So in exams, you may get in any manner. Okay. But this question is important for your examination. And even I have uploaded a few question, few important problems in your Teams app. Okay. Digital communication like files. You can see the material. Okay, I have uploaded all the four chapters material. You can go through that. So P of X is alpha and 1 minus alpha. So instead of alpha and 1 minus alpha, you can also be given with some 0 0.8 and 0 0.2. Okay, now P of Y by X into P of X. Please multiply. I told you how to multiply P of Y by X with P of X. So whenever P of X is multiplied with any like uh, any matrix, P of X1 is applied to the first row and P of X2 is applied to the second row. So what is P of X1 alpha and what is P of X2 1 minus alpha? So now alpha is applied to the first row and 1 minus alpha is applied to the second row. Okay, so please multiply the first row with alpha and second row with 1 minus alpha because already I told you P of X matrix is applicable to the corresponding row. So first element is applied to the first row and the second element 1 minus alpha is applied to the second row. And similarly P of Y matrix is applicable to column is applicable to column. Now in order to obtain P of XY, please multiply the first row with alpha. So here you can see P of XY is 
multiply the p of xy matrix with the alpha and chipping the first row. So p alpha, q alpha and zero. Now if you observe the second row elements. Zero, one minus alpha into q. Similarly, p into one minus alpha, p into one minus alpha. OK, so just I multiplied the first row of p of y by x with first element of p of x. And the second row of p of uh, p of y by x with the second element of p of x. Here actually this is not p of y, x by y. This is p of y by x. OK, just we have multiplied uh, the first row of P of Y by X with first element of P of X and the second row of P of Y by X with second element of P of X. OK, now you know how to check the elements of P of X, Y. OK, so to check the sum of elements in P of X, Y. If you see. If you see the sum of all elements present in P of X, Y, it is 1. So what is the condition to verify that it is a joint probability matrix? I told you the condition that sum of all the elements present in P of X, Y should be equal to 1. Now if you add all these elements, P, o, P alpha plus Q alpha plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 minus alpha into Q plus P into 1 minus alpha. If you add all these P alpha, P alpha gets cancelled and Q alpha, Q alpha gets cancelled and finally you will get P plus Q. P plus Q value is 1 because P, Q are the probabilities of or the element probabilities of the event X1 or X2. So that's why the sum of probabilities of an event should be equal to 1. So on the carry P plus Q 1 now to the so sum of all the prob so sum of all the elements present in the p of x y is 1 so that's why i can say that the corresponding uh, uh, matrix is p of x y matrix okay that's why this matrix i can say that this is a joint probability matrix now finally we obtained p of x y okay so using this p of x y I think you know how to calculate the P of Y and P of X. So wherever P of X, Y matrix is known to you, we can calculate the P of X matrix as well as P of Y matrix. If you want to get P of X matrix, please add the row elements because P alpha plus Q alpha. If you add the interest P plus Q into alpha. So P plus Q is one. So first element is alpha. So if you add the second row elements, if you add the second row elements, it is 1 minus alpha into Q plus P into 1 minus alpha. Here also you will get P plus Q as 1. So you will get 1 minus alpha. Okay, so that's why first element is alpha and second element is 1 minus alpha. So adding the row elements gives you the respective P of X matrix and adding the column elements, adding the column elements gives you the respective element of P of Y. Now, once you obtain P of X, Y, you can calculate P of X and P of Y. Because already P of X is known to you, you can cross verify it. Okay, now let us see how we calculated the P of Y matrix by using uh, P of X, Y. I said you because there are three columns. How many columns are there? Three columns are there. So you can calculate three elements of output. That is P of Y. So P of Y1 will be the sum of the elements present in the first column. So first column will be P alpha and zero. So that's why it is P alpha. And similarly, if you observe the second column, Q alpha, plus 1 minus alpha Q. So it, here Q alpha, Q alpha gets cancelled. So you will get P of Y2 as Q. Similarly, uh, if you add the third, if you observe the third column, 0 plus 
P into 1 minus alpha. So it will be P into 1 minus alpha. So finally, we obtained P of Y matrix consisting of three elements. These three elements are obtained by adding the respective column elements. Now, finally, you obtained P of X, P of Y and P of XY. I think you know how to calculate the marginal entropies and joint entropy using these matrices. Now let us calculate uh, H of X using P of X. I have written the expression here. So H of X is minus summation J is equal to 1 to 2 because there are two source elements. So if you see in P of X, how many elements are there? Two elements. Those are alpha and 1 minus alpha. Okay. So minus of alpha log alpha base 2 plus 1 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2. Now here you can see we calculated P of Y matrix. So using this you can calculate H of Y as minus summation K is equal to 1 to N. N is 3 here. Okay. P, uh, like uh, PK log PK base 2 on that. So P alpha log P alpha base 2 plus Q alpha log Q base 2 for Q log Q base 2 plus P into 1 minus alpha log P into 1 minus alpha base 2. Now how can you calculate H of XY using P of XY minus summation J is equal to 1 to N 1 to M summation K is equal to 1 to N P of XJ comma YK log P of XJ comma YK base 2. Okay, here if you observe there are six elements. First element is P alpha log P alpha base 2 plus second element that is first uh, row second column Q alpha log Q alpha base 2 plus zeros, ne? 0 log 0 plus 0 log 0. So you can neglect the two zeros plus 1 minus alpha into Q log Q into 1 minus alpha base 2 plus last element is P into 1 minus alpha log P into 1 minus alpha base 2. So finally we obtained H of X, H of Y and H of XY. So what you are supposed to calculate? You need to calculate the mutual information. So here you can, what is the expression for mutual information? I of XY is H of X plus H of Y minus H of XY. That is the one way. So just I mentioned all the H of X, H of Y and H of X, Y. Okay, in this expression, if you see P alpha log P alpha base 2 gets cancelled because here you have minus P alpha log P alpha base 2 and here you have P alpha log P alpha base 2. So these two gets cancelled. Okay, next uh, here this is negative sign. So minus P into 1 minus alpha log P into 1 minus alpha base 2. So here also there is one more parameter. So both gets cancelled. Actually here minus of minus H of XY. So minus of minus here you will get positive sign. Okay. So these two terms gets cancelled. And now uh, first, uh, first parameter is alpha log alpha base 2. Okay. So minus minus. So minus uh, actually it's a common term for these two terms. So let us multiply with negative sign individually. So minus alpha log alpha base 2 minus of 1 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2. Okay. Next. Here you can observe I took Q as common. So you can take Q as common. So here if I take Q as common, this is only the simplification. Okay. So Q I took as common. So minus log Q base 2 plus Q the end. So alpha log Q alpha base 2 plus what is the rest parameters? This is the only parameter, but actually here if you observe 1 minus alpha into Q, here we took Q as common. Now let us divide the uh, divide it into two parts. That is 1 into log Q 1 minus alpha base 2 and minus alpha separate the two terms minus alpha log Q into 1 minus alpha base 2. Just I have separated 1 minus alpha into two terms. Okay, now let us simplify this. This is alpha log alpha Q base 2. This is in the form of log AB. So I have split it into two terms. 
I have split into two terms. So that is alpha log alpha base 2 plus alpha log q base 2. This is the first term. And second term is second term is log q into 1 minus alpha base 2. So this is log q base 2 plus log 1 minus q into base 2. Okay. And the third term is minus log q base 2 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2. Just I have split into log log a b into log a plus log b. Now here see how many parameters gets cancelled. This is alpha log alpha base 2. Okay. And uh, do you have any? No. No. Uh, so please keep it aside. Next alpha log q base 2. And here you have minus alpha log q base 2. Both gets cancelled. Okay. So finally you have alpha log alpha base 2 only that parameter gets cancelled okay now from this you can uh, write, take write it as alpha log alpha base 2 plus this term gets cancelled okay which parameter alpha log q base 2 so alpha log q base 2 gets cancelled now i took this whole as 1 minus alpha into log 1 minus alpha base 2 because here you have log 1 minus alpha base 2 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2. I can take 1 minus alpha as common. Okay, so that will be 1 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2. Now here I can take alpha log alpha base 2 plus 1 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2 as common from the two terms first term and second term so you will get it as alpha minus of alpha minus of alpha log alpha base 2 plus 1 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2 you can consider it as h of x so h of x into 1 minus q because h of x is negative so 1 minus q here you have plus terms so in order to represent it as h of x you need minus of alpha log alpha base 2 plus 1 minus alpha log 1 minus alpha base 2. So h of x into 1 minus q. So it is p into h of x because 1 minus q is p. Okay. So this is how you have to calculate, you have calculated the value of i of x y as p into h of x. But what is the channel capacity? Channel capacity is the maximum of i of x y. So maximum of p into h of x. P is a common uh, like uh, constant value. You can take it out. So P into maximum of H of X. So that is log M base 2. Log here M is 2 because uh, for a binary erasure channel, there are two inputs and three outputs. So two inputs come to M is 2. So log 2 base 2 will be 1. So our channel capacity C is finally two, P into log 2 base 2. So that is P. So what is P actually? P is the probability of getting the correct symbol. So if the transmitted data is 0, output should be 0. Then our probability is P. If the transmitted data is 1, output should also be 1. Then the probability is P. So P is the probability of getting the correct output or correct symbol. So channel capacity for a binary erasure channel is P. And it is independent of P of X1 and P of X2. It would be P of X1 alpha HR, P of X2 1 minus alpha HR. Okay, but uh, what is the channel capacity? It is P, P only. Okay, for a 2 by 3 matrix. So with this, uh, we completed the properties of channel capacity for various discrete channels. The tomorrow next class, we can continue with the capacity of Gaussian channel, which is an analog channel, which is stated by Shannon Hartley. So it is uh, defined as either Shannon Hartley theorem or Shannon capacity theorem. Okay, it's uh, the two persons that stated the capacity of a Gaussian channel is as uh, C is equal to bandwidth log 1 plus SNR base 2. Okay. So this derivation is very, very important for your examination. So we can discuss in the next class. Okay. So any doubts in the today's session?
if you have any doubts you can ask